So from a mechanical standpoint, the spine is a flexible rod. A good analogy is a coat hanger. If you stretch that coat hanger out and you start to bend it, you can bend it in all sorts of different directions. You can always return it to its original position. The problem with that is just like a coat hanger, as you bend over and over again, that coat hanger starts to wear out or the spine starts to wear out in that location. Let's contrast that with the hips, which are a ball and socket joint where the thigh bone fits into the pelvis. It's able to move in all sorts of different directions as well, but doesn't tend to wear out, or at least doesn't tend to wear out as soon as the spine does. Most people develop back pain in their 20s to 40s, uh, whereas most people don't end up getting their hips replaced until they're in their 60s, 70s, and 80s. So in most cases, what we wanna try and do is move through the hips, moving at that ball and socket joint, rather than moving through the spine. So what I'd like to do real quick is demonstrate uh, that movement through the spine is if I were to bend it over and pick something up. So if I come here, you can see that spine sort of start to round. I've gone from this gentle inward curvature called the lordosis to a reversal of that called the kyphosis. Now you can contrast that with what we call a hip hinge moving through the hips. Here, as I do this, I still have this inward curvature in the spine. This is what we want to avoid. And this is what we would like to do ideally. You can see that my hips, my pelvis actually translates backwards as I do this. 